welcome, welcome, welcome if you are here for the first time and good to have you back if you've been here before. In this diary entry, I'm going to be tackling the Doman Kimono dress. Now, I simply love these kind of videos because it's kind of like a two in one. Because not only do you get to see how I manipulate to make the design in question, you also get to make your basic pattern for that style so that you can manipulate it into anything you want. Now in this video, I'm going to be taking you through two basic pattern making processes. And that's the kimono basic pattern, as well as the doorman basic pattern. Yay! All right then, let's go right ahead and interpret the design. Now I got my inspiration from a picture a friend of mine showed me. So in this sketch, what we're going to be creating is a loosely fitted kimono dress that has a V neckline in front and a style line that goes from top to bottom at the center front. Now the bottom of the center front has a curved cutout and the sleeve has been synced in at the ends with cuffs. I can't wait to make this next week so make sure that you are subscribed and your notification is turned on so that you do not miss out on that. Also give this video as many likes as you can if you want to see more of these kind of videos from me and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Okay then until we get to sew this next week let's go right ahead and get cracking with the pattern making. My name is Ijoma. And welcome to my sewing diary. The materials you will need are your
to the end of the bottom 90 degree line made with your curved ruler like so to complete the kimono block. With two extra pattern papers underneath, go ahead and trace out your front and back patterns. So you'll be tracing the center back and center front lines, as well as your Going back to your front pattern, extend the length to your desired length and slim fit the side by first marking a point 2 inches down from the waistline at the side and another point 1 inch in from the sideline at the hem and then connecting both points with your long ruler to create your new sideline. Then create the slit opening at the front by marking a point 5 inches in from the new sideline and 7 inches up from the hem at the center front and connecting both points with your curved ruler like so. Mark how deep you would like your neckline to be at the center front from the original neckline. You want to use anything from about 6 to 9 inches so that your head can easily pass through. And then redraw your neckline from your neck point to the depth at the center front with your curved ruler. I've removed all excess paper so you can see the outline. Mark a point halfway between your neck point and shoulder point and draw a straight line down to the hem with your long ruler. Split your pattern down this line and separate the pieces by one inch using your waist and hip lines as references to ensure proper alignment. Redraw your shoulder line and then add a half inch seam allowance at the side, arm, shoulder, neckline and center front. At the hem, add a one and a half inches seam allowance. Remembering to fold and outline the sides for a well folded hem. Label your pattern. You'll be cutting two of this. Then it's time to create the front facing. So mark three inches in from the original neckline and center front, starting from the neck point to the hem like so, and connect all points to create the facing. 
Then with extra pattern paper underneath the center front, go ahead and trace out the facing from the shoulder to the hem, including all seam allowances and reference lines. Sorry about the shaky screen. Outline your traced marks and label your pattern. You'll be cutting two of this. At the back pattern, go through the same steps as you've done the front, and that is extending the length, slim fitting the side, splitting into two, and separating the pieces by one inch. Redraw your shoulder line and bottom and then add a half inch seam allowance at the side, arm, shoulder and neckline. Do not add any seam allowance at the center back and add a one and a half inches seam allowance at the hem, remembering to fold it in for a well folded hem. Label your pattern. You'll be cutting one of this on fold. Now we create the back facing. So place extra pattern paper underneath the back neckline and pin in place, matching the edge of the extra pattern paper to the center back of the back pattern. And then mark 3 inches down from the original neckline from shoulder line to center back. Connect all points with your curved ruler. And then trace out your back facing from the new curve to the neckline and then the shoulder line, including all seam allowances. Outline all trace marks and label your pattern. You'll be cutting one of this on fold at the center back. Next, create the cuff by drawing a rectangle to your desired length. I use two inches and its width should be half the circumference of your cuff measurement. Add a half inch seam allowance at the top, bottom and on one side. And then label your pattern. You'll be cutting four pieces on fold on one of the vertical edge. And you're done! Okay, let's quickly go through a few checks. Subscription check, notification check, and like check. Fantastic. Drop me a comment if you have any questions whatsoever and can't wait to see you next week when I'll be sewing this together. So until next week, see you later. Bye!